Now, it's going to be a very short video, but it is going to be the third in the, in the precursor, as you will, um, videos that I'm hoping to do a live broadcast at some, at some point very soon if people are interested. So I'm going to ask you, if you are interested, let me know below by, by putting a comment down there. Um, I want to start by saying, in the first one, we talked about Zoom and we talked about virtual meetings and how public posting, they can, put in, they can insert things into there and all that kind of thing. The second one, we talked a little deeper on some things. But today, we're going to talk about ways that you can check to see whether your email has been compromised, um, ways to verify people, and that kind of thing. And we're going to talk about six different applications. The first one is if you have an email address that you're not sure, if you're getting a lot of spam from it and you want to find out um, has it been compromised, not only will you be able to find out if it's been compromised, but you'll be able to... Um, to You'll be able to verify it, but you also find out where it's at. And in some cases, there may be lawsuits um, because email access is an important thing. The have I, the set I'm going to share with you also has ways to verify email, um, or rather, not only emails, but passwords um, that have been compromised, as well as websites and such. So let's begin by sharing. Have I been pawned? Now, have I been pawned is a very simple site. It's free to use. And you can do a domain search to see whether a domain, domain has been compromised, whether it's real or not. You can find out who's been pawned as far as businesses, as well as emails. You can check your password to see if that's been compromised. Now, this is all free stuff, and there's things you can do in here, but the one I want to get to is this one right here. I Have I been pawned? They've got a place in here, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen with one that I already know has been compromised. Now, I put in my earliest email in my recovery process where I called myself with continued recovery. And I got that directly from the process of, of recovery. Watch what it shows when it gets done. It says, oh no, pawned. Pawned seven data breaches and found no pace. Subscribe to search sensitive breaches. I wouldn't worry about subscribing, but this gives you a, a good idea. Um, that particular email has been pawned or has been pawned and was breached through AT&T and all of the companies that you see there. Okay, and they're all verification sites. Now, the other thing to realize is that Gmail has been compromised overall. Now that said, if I change it to one of my other ones, which I'm bound to since I'm doing this video and I'm not hiding it, I'm bound to get this one pawned next, but I've got backups and I've got backups for a reason. But this one, if you haven't been pawned, it'll look like this. Good news. No, no, no pawnage found. No breach, no breached accounts and no pace. Okay. And it says this, this the, the whole thing about subscribing, you don't have to worry about that. This is just to verify your email. Now, the interesting thing is you can do a domain search to see if, if a domain has been than compromise, especially if it's your domain. Um, and it's email domains, the whole bit. Who's been pawned? This this will tell you a lot of the sites that have been pawned and it'll give you more details. And as you can see, I've scrolled quite a ways down now and it barely touched the surface because the scroll bar is right there. And I scrolled through about 30 different ones. So you get all the information you need to know companies that 
companies and sites that have been pawned and that kind of thing. Passwords. Here you can put in your what you, what you use for passwords. And what it will do is it will tell you if that password has been compromised. If it has, then you'll want to change it. Now, that's just one of the tools that I think is really important. But like I said, simply using the free part of it, you get a lot of good use out of it. Next, I want to show something that if you have a person who, let's say somebody's trying to scam you. If you want to, to verify that person, or even if you if it's not somebody that's trying to scam you, you just want to verify the person's really who they say they are, the next one will help you immensely. That site's called Grabify. Now, Grabify allows you to set up a free account to track. Um, you create a URL and a tracking code, and you can do you can use it by a picture, by a link that looks innocent and such. And what it happens is this, you'll get, you'll have, you'll have a way that you can log in and you can see when they click on it, where they're coming from, their IP address, all the information you need to verify or not verify them. Um, Grabify is a good tool. Again, this, this is free. There are ones you can register and you can and you can get paid accounts, but these are free accounts that you can do that kind of stuff with. Um, another thing is if you want to verify an email, let's say you get an email from somebody. Um, and you're not sure if the email is accurate. You can use a tool called email verifier. Email verifier, let me put this up here for you. Let's see, there it is. It's a place where you can put in, you can search, and e you can verify an email, you can find an email mail by name, so if somebody's giving you a name or, or a company, you can find the emails you need to find here. Now, this is free to do initially, but they do have pro other products that are that are out there. And so there might be some charges in the long run with it. But short term, in, in a crunch, it will be helpful. Now, another one that I'm going to share with you is free people search. This one, you can find out if, it, if the person's real, whether the, whether the email is really theirs, a whole lot of other things. And that's pretty much free. Okay, it's a free tool to use, and you can do all sorts of things with it. Um, you can get information that you wouldn't normally get. Um, that's the key to that. Now, again, these are free to start, and it's it's basically called That's Them, but it's a free people search engine. You also have PimEyes. Now, PimEyes allows you to do a reverse image um, search. The value of that is this, is if somebody is trying to create an account and they've used a picture that's found somewhere else, if you upload a photo, it will tell you everywhere that that photo has been used. It will track it down. It'll show you, you can do it free, you can, use the paid part of it and that kind of thing. And the last one, I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about it other than that Tails is yet another tracking system. And it's also a way to protect yourself. And this one, I haven't had a lot of experience with, but it is something that can be um, helpful. Tails is something that allows you to avoid surveillance, censorship, advertising, and viruses. Um, you're secure anywhere, um, secure, secure, secure your computer anyway. Um, it'll give you a dig digital security toolbox. It gives you information on free software. Tails is a browser of sorts or a connection to browsers that allows you to do things that you normally 
wouldn't be able to do to protect yourself. Now those six are just the beginning. And I'm giving them out on this video to let people know that while I'm not a professional, I don't do this for a living, I started doing some things back in 2011. I started doing things online that had to do with recovery. And late 2017, I started doing Zoom meetings. And prior to that, I was doing other types of meetings. And I would get people that would come in either when I wasn't there or into the meeting. And on occasion, they'd come in under the radar. In other words, they'd come in piggybacking off and somebody else that came in to a meeting. And as a result, I realized that there's a very good reason why Zoom and pretty much everybody says, do not, if you have a meeting that you're doing for recovery or that you're doing specific, don't send it out on social media. Even a closed meeting right now or a closed um, Facebook page has breaches. And here's why. Because when Facebook started growing, they added on other things. They added on companies that originally were different from them. And as a result, with each thing that they added on from the outside, in other words, they have ways that you can communicate through different platforms um, that are all connected. LinkedIn and all you know, all those different sites that you go to. They're all kind of interconnected with with um, with Facebook. And by doing so, they're I'm finding out from sources that I have that there's actually been some problems there. And if you've noticed that your account has some wonkiness to it, email wise or Facebook wise, or any of that kind of thing. The best recommendation I can do is to make sure you change your password, do some adjusting, consider possibly closing down an account and opening up a brand new account. Um, they normally would inform you if you if they know that you've been compromised, but you don't always know that. So for your own safety, take every precaution you can. I strongly advise checking your emails if you've been going to meetings that are publicly posted because the likelihood, if you had one that wasn't pawned before, if you've gone to public meetings where they can put code into the link, you probably have, have been pawned. And what I mean by pawned is that means they've accessed the information. They've accessed information that's tied to your email and that can lead to access to a Zoom account and that kind of thing. Now that said, it can also lead to a Zoom account. Um, as much as, and I, I'm not saying don't use these these things these these places, but use the tools you have to make sure that you're that you're regularly checking and making sure you're safe. Along with that, make sure that you have a good solid firewall on your phone and all electronic devices. That you have a malware and um, security measures put on that are constantly scanning. I happen to have one that scans from the web. So basically it's scanning anything that's coming towards my computer. Um, a lot of these security things are going from that. From that they're, what they're doing is they're setting it to, at a server offsite and that server comes in and checks to see every, it puts a barrier between you, you, and, your device, you, you and your devices and everything else on the net. None of them are perfect. But choose wisely and have your security set up. Um, if you, like, as I said earlier in the video, if you are interested in seeing this, um, doing more of this and maybe having a live um, feed, let me know by commenting below, giving the video a like or what, 